All right, coaches, welcome back to our Fear the Wing series, um, a big rule in the world production on the single wing offense. So I'd get out of there just so everybody can see me now. Um, today, and just to recap sort of where we were at last time, we talked about, as I go back through my PowerPoint here, we talked about why the single wing, the basics of the single wing, sort of the history of like what I've known in the state of Virginia with the single wing. And we're going to talk more about the Virginia single wing um, cause I think, you know, when I got to doing the history and the modern history of it, um, a lot of roots in Virginia, I talked about the Stan River team and, you know, their Jim Thorpe like athlete and Grayson Overstreet. Um, we talked about Pop Warner and pre sort of Carlisle Indians. And then, you know, obviously Jim Thorpe, who the original single wing was sort of built around. And, you know, that great, one of the greatest athletes, probably the greatest pure athlete in American history is who we build the single wing around. So when you talk about building an offense around athletes, today we're going to talk about Dan X Bible, okay, um, from the University of Texas, and sort of his influence not only to the single wing but to the T formation and how he sort of brings the T formation, an old formation that we talk about with Walter Camp back in the 19th century, brings it into vote again. Um, so before we do that, got to pay the bills, guys. You know, we're talking about our one bag blocking scheme. Um, I have a link in our description. If you want to get it, we are discounted down to $30 through the end of December, and then it's gone. This is the only system I think, you know, I'm not just selling you a playbook. I'm, I'm drawing it up based on the fronts that you want, and I'm answering your questions for the if-thans, Okay. You know, I think how Mummy's selling his darn air raid offense. Um, I can't say anything. I'm going through trying to get the air raid certification myself and do that stuff just because I like it. But uh, how Mummy's selling it for like four or five hundred bucks. I'm selling you a playbook and the chance to talk to me and everything for thirty. Now I'm not any how Mummy, so I'll take about being about a less than a tenth of how Mummy. I can take that. I think um, that's sort of like. You know, as we record this, um, Coach, Coach Gus Malzahn was recently let go at Auburn. I think the buyout was like $21 million. I texted a buddy. I said, hey, man, that's my goal in 15 years to be bought out. 15 years after being a high school football coach to be bought out by Auburn for $21 million. I said, I'll make them the deal of the century. I'll take half. <laughs> um, but once again, that playbook gets you access to me for any questions or concern. Uh, the fronts are drawn up to what you want, and it's a complete system of our inside zone and our G series and our complements off of that. It's what we call the one blocking steam playbook. Okay, now we're getting into the episode. Let's get to the show. Episode 19, Dana Axe Bible in the University of Texas. A little bit shorter history than we're talking about Pop Warner and Carlisle Indians here. But we're going to talk about Dana Bible. So just to recap where we were at, I know I talked about it some. But as we get into the 40s and, you know, pre-50s, really, um, versions of the single wing are floating around everywhere. Okay? Different versions, different tweaks. And we're going to talk about Dana Bible's little tweaks and really what I could see happening from it now. And Dana Bible was the first guy. Also, we'll talk about the importance that comes with the spinner series. Okay? Just to give you a little background on Dana Bible, started coaching in 1913 as the head coach of Mississippi College. And he coached that. Listen to this list and tell me this list wouldn't get you, like, Hall of Fame level credential, credentials. Winning multiple national titles along the way. Coached at LSU, Texas A&M, and Nebraska prior to live, arriving in Texas, which is where we're going to focus in 1937. 33 years as being a head coach, he had 30 winning records. I think that is amazing. Peyton, can you report to the office, please? Peyton, to the office. Sorry about that, guys. Um, now, take, talking about um, his time prior to Texas, he had his time at Texas A&M, where he also coached baseball and basketball to school, takes a one-year hiatus in 1918. But what's awesome, okay, we want to talk about 1917, 1919. You want to see a guy who knew how to get it done. 1917, his Aggies go undefeated, untied, and outscored their opponents 270 to zero. He takes his one-year hiatus to be a fighter pilot for the United States in 1918, then comes back in 1919 
and his Aggies go undefeated, untied, outscore their opponents 275-0. to zero. Only college football team that should be two bleh, to record two seasons without being scored upon in history. They're retroactively given a national championship in 1919. It's one of a couple. Is He's going to win, I think, like two at A&M and one at Texas. Okay? And then at Texas, he becomes Longhorns AD and head football coach in 1937 and sort of brings him to national prominence, wins a national title, wins three Southwest Conference titles, brings with him his own version of the single wing, okay? When you're reading about the single wing history, um, one, of the work, one of the things that comes up is it talks about an All-American for Texas by the name of Jack Crane. And his playbook was found. It was one of these things that just sort of surfaced, handwritten playbook. Circa 1939-1940, it's sort of where we get this in a book that Dana Bible comes to publish in 1949 or where we get sort of the drawings and sort of how he etched and how he made things different, okay? And the major adjustments that he made, okay, we're not going to see it in these drawings, these depictions, but Dana Bible balances the lineup, which I think is one up. Uh, you know, we talked about before that we had this unbalanced line before. Dana's going to balance the line back up and slightly split his ends out. And I think this is going to give way to bring back in the T formation that we saw with Walter Camp. Okay, Dana Bible actually ends up coming and reviving the T formation uh, with Coach Shaughnessy from Chicago and Coach Leahy from Notre Dame being two of those big guys. But I'll get to that in a minute. Um, the basic adjustments, and these are pictures from his book. If you take a look here, he's going to split his wing out. To me, what this does, okay, they still have the unbalanced look. You have it almost with a direct quarterback instead of having the two sort of in the snap in the middle. Now we have a direct quarterback. To me, this gives you a good crack series right here to be able to crack him out right there. What do we do with a flex tight end? What do we do with a flex slot receiver? It gives him a chance instead of working on a reach block that he's now working down for a crack block. And I think you can get a crack exchange there. All right. And he describes in this book talking about the spinner series. Okay. Talking about the spin fakes and everything that I think we're going to do a whole episode dedicated to what the spinner series involves in the single wing. You know, so I mean, we're already getting into that type of stuff. And this influence with splitting out this wing right here. OK, we're going to influence formations like what we see at Notre Dame with Newt Rotney in the Notre Dame box, which we're going to talk about in the next episode. OK, so we're seeing the adjustments made and it's doing sort of what we do. What we do as coaches, we influence, we get different influences, we get different ideas, different ways to solve problems and we look at it different ways. OK, Bible moves his wing out. Gives him a different blocking angle. Bible really pushes a spinner series. Gives him different deceptions within the spinner series, okay? Um, his championship football book, which is where we get this picture from, I think I went and checked on Amazon. It's like 20 bucks right now. I'm thinking about, I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and pick up a copy and see what it looks like. Um, but, you know, first written, first written work of the spinner series in football details the spinner, the formation, the basic structures. Copyrighted back in 1949, guys. One of the, you know, talk about early, early books talking about the single wing. So good stuff there. Um, and then we get to the advent of the T formation. Okay. He, he works with Coach Shaughnessy up in Chicago and Coach Leahy in Notre Dame to sort of form the T formation revolution. T formation revolution is taken and popularized following the single wing in the 50s. It's originally devised in the 1940s, 1950s. We're not going to get into the T formation necessarily as much. That might be one in the future, um, but we're not going to get into it in this series just as we're talking primarily single wing, but different ways of spacing up and still working on the idea of deception with who's getting the ball. He's going to even it back up, though, with um, his T formation. You know, when I got into dealing – just a little bit of dive into the T formation. You see guys in the 60s like Woody Hay, Hayes popularized at Ohio State. So just different stuff to look at and sort of what begins something else. And I told you, okay, so we're going back and we're thinking about the crack potential here in the spinner series. 
those are the two big things that Dana Bible contributes. The crack potential with this split out wing right here and the idea of the spinner series. And we're going to go ahead, all right, I told you everything influences or begats something else. You know, spread offense of Urban Meyer influenced several others, several other different coaches. The air raid offense of uh, Hal Mummy influences Mike Leach, influences Cliff Kingsbury, it influences um, Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma. We all get these different influences. So our next time we're going to talk with the history, we're going to go into the Notre Dame box formation here and how that was influenced off the single wing. You know, and we're going to go into the different ways that offense gets influenced. So we're looking for next time, next Tuesday, um, just to give you an idea, you know, I'm speaking ahead as things are coming out. I wanted to have you all up to date with the schedule. So next Tuesday, we're going to talk about the Notre Dame box. Then Thursday would be Christmas Eve. Coaches, if you're expecting to come in and watch a football video on Christmas Eve, you know, wherever you are, take the day off. You know, take some time, be with your family, you know, enjoy them. Um, it's something to be really, you know, thinking about going forward here. Take some time off, enjoy them, especially the holidays. And I'll see you back on the Tuesday following Christmas. Um, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I think that's the 29th of December. I'll see you back on the 29th of December to talk about sort of modern day fathers of the single wing. Talk about the influence in the state of Virginia. Talk about the Rick Darlington down, used to be at a pop cut. I got to remember where he's at now. I know he moved out of Florida um, with all those types of influences. And then we'll get into the nitty gritty work of a single wing, guys. But I just wanted you to have that update. Just a little short video today talking about Dana Bible and his influences in the single wing. Um, but thank you, coaches. Remember, if you want to win bid, you want to score, po- you got to score points. You want to score, you got, uh, you want to score points. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's been a long day at school. You want to store points. You got to dominate in the trenches. And to do that, you got to know that bids rule the world. I'll see you next time, coaches.